folks, um, I got a question from an investor about why we don't um, uh, include a refinance into our, our underwriting. Uh, why would we not do that if it is um, in the business plan? And it's true we're, uh, we always seek a refinance um, if, it, if it looks like it's going to benefit investors, but um, there's, there's you know, quite a bit of uncertainty as to what will happen if you uh, figure in a re refinance into your underwriting. We, we don't know what interest rates will be um, at the time of the refinance. Say we're, we're uh, projecting a refinance in three years. Um, we don't know what the interest rates are going to be or, or whether you know, financing will be available. Um, it's just another uh, area of adding uncertainty into you know, an area where we're already trying to project uh, what things will look like in the future. So. Um, a business plan, uh, you know, we, we, we go in there, we, we renovate the units, we fix up the building, we fix up the interior, the exterior, um, we get it operating better and you go back to the bank and uh, you get it appraised with a higher value. And now you've, um, you know, you've upped the value on the asset and you can seek a refinance, pull cash out, return it to the investors and stay in the deal and um, earn cash flow. But um, again, it's, it's very difficult to predict what exactly that will look like. So we sort of remain conservative. Um, well, we do remain conservative and not include uh, refinancing into the numbers. So to illustrate, I'm going to share my screen here and show you, I believe what I said to the investor was that it uh, juices the return. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, down here, you can see this is a solid looking deal. The internal rate of return is 15. Um, and we got av average cash on cash, 8%, uh, roughly. So not too bad. Um, but look what happens when we decide that we are going to include a refinance into the deal. Uh, let's say after year three, boom. Uh, those really juiced up, right? We went from 15 to almost 18. Uh, IRR, and we went from uh, eight to almost well eleven and a half percent there, and so that's uh, why I tell people to be careful of deals that you get placed in front of you, where the uh, you're getting double digit cash on cash. Um, you just have to look under the hood and make sure that they're not including refinance because it will do this. It will juice the returns. Um, our latest deal actually has 10% cash on cash, which is outstanding. And, um, you know, as I say, we don't include uh, a refinance into projections. It's just a straight 10% cash on cash. That is good, uh, in my opinion, from what I've been seeing over the last uh, several years. Um, so, you know, just why is that? Uh, for, the, for those of you who don't know, um, we're looking at cash on cash return up here. Um, let's say it's 8%, right? Here's your annual cash flow. You're earning 8% on a $100,000 investment. Um, you're earning $8,000 in annual cash flow. You divide your annual cash flow by your initial investment, right? To get your uh, cash on cash return. So what happens if um, we return half of that capital back to you, the investor, and you're now, now you have less money in the deal, right? You have $50,000 in the deal. Boom. Look at that. 16% cash on cash. Um, you know, that's beautiful. That's what can happen. That's what we hope will happen when we seek a refinance, um, which is what we're doing in our last two deals. Um, but we're not banking on that um, because we want to keep our, uh, keep our projections conservative and um, not keep people's or get people's hopes up too much. So I hope that Makes sense. Uh, that quick little uh, example. I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, appreciate you tuning in and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.